near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with SAMHSA. Ironhide Construction is hiring. They're looking for hardworking, self-motivated individuals who are team players. Ironhide Construction has openings for an experienced project manager, estimator, apprentice, skilled laborer, and erector or installer. They will train the right people and make sure you understand the position and requirements. At Ironhide Construction, it's own it, be honest, and do it right. Apply today and learn more about their other benefits at ironhideconstruction.com, where they're committed to you every step of the way. Gamut Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gainet Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round, and their strong team culture makes it not a job, but a career. Gainet Trucking offers health, vision, and digital insurance, 401k with company match, an employee assistance program, and other bonus programs. Build a better career today with great team culture at Gainet Trucking. Learn more and apply today at GainetTrucking.com. Start your Sundays off right with Jeff and Nicole Essink on Fitness Fanatics. Jeff and Nicole discuss health and wellness, how to achieve fitness goals, and more through the life of gym owners and gym goers. It's Fitness Fanatics from 9 to 11 a.m. on Sundays on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Constructors is now hiring for all positions, with laborers starting at $23 and up based on experience. Constructors has immediate job openings for laborers, mechanics, bridge builders, operators, and drivers. Start your new career today. Constructors offers great pay, health, dental, and vision insurance, paid time off, paid holidays, and so much more. Join the crew today and be a part of Nebraska's oldest paving company dating back to 1908. For a complete list of openings and to apply online, visit ConstructorsLincoln.com. The Red White Spring Game is coming soon. Do you know your tailgate meal for before and after the game? Fuhrer's Cheese Spread is the dip that brings everyone together to celebrate something for all Nebraskans made in Nebraska. And it goes well with crackers, meats, soups, and more. How could you tailgate without it? Get to your local grocery store today and load up on Fuhrer's Cheese Spread. No spring game party or tailgate is complete without it. At Doan University, we build leaders, and that means your success and achievements come first. At Doan University, your future is uniquely yours, and our world-class liberal arts education is just the beginning. We invite you to schedule your campus visit and experience why Doan University will start you on your journey to your future career. Learn more by scheduling your personal campus visit today at doan.edu slash visit. See you soon. Your child was embarrassed when you arrived at their basketball game. 75% of parents or guardians report current alcohol use. Drinking alcohol can cause harm to children and loved ones. By drinking less, your child will be excited to see you at their basketball game. If you or a loved one is looking for help, find a treatment facility near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat. 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with SAMHSA. Weekly wrap sessions with All-American quarterback Steve Taylor, Nebraska Football Hall of Famer. Blitz is on. Taylor picks it up. Fires. Touchdown. Nebraska. Canadian Football League Grey Cup champion. Taylor again. Wide open. First team All-American quarterback Steve Taylor. A five for Steve Taylor. Is a new Nebraska record. Welcome in Wednesday rap sessions with All American quarterback Steve Taylor here on 93.7 The Ticket. And we have a special guest. First off, no, we got two. I'm not Bach. Well, no, but yeah. I'm Rico. <laughs> Bach has some business to attend to, so I've been handling his duties on the captain and now with Steve Taylor as Steve joins us and our special guest fresh off of mouth surgery. Mm. What? what? Derek what? Pearson. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know. Mm-hmm. He said mouth surgery. I have an appointment tomorrow with my annual physical. Do you? Yeah. Gotta take care I need of to go, too. I need to go. It's uh, on. You gotta take care of yourself. So you gotta see what's going on. Gotta stay healthy. Gotta right? stay healthy. Gotta stay healthy. Gotta try. Gotta try. 
All stitched Yeah, so up. we got the man in the house. So we're All going, stitched up. This so. may be real deep. I'm talking real deep. A lot of, a lot of knowledge. Right? Stitched up. So <laughs> stitched up. Um, I, I have to, a couple of things. Yeah. One, I have to, uh, later this, so I wasn't able to talk. Literally, okay. physically weren't able to talk Monday and Tuesday. And then this morning they did some things that went in with stitches. And, and uh, you're still here if you did that this morning. Yeah. Normally I'm done like. I, until I'm, late, late afternoon. I'm well, no, because I've, I've been in bed. I've literally not been able to be, get out of bed. Okay. On Tuesday, uh, post operation, and then, um, and I don't take, I won't take pain meds. Oh. So yeah, they and then they told me this morning that yeah, uh, today and tomorrow are going to be the worst two days. Okay. Well, you look good. You look good. And you sound good, and your mouth moving and everything. Uh, so you must be all right. Listen, the, Wait, he the, told the, me that he was getting. <laughs> we we were coming back from the supernovas on. Sunday, right? We're driving back after the road trip to Atlanta, and he's telling me he's getting mouth surgery on Monday. And I was like, "Take the week off. We can handle it. Take the week off." Yeah, he wasn't. Yeah, you know, he got the mouth surgery Monday. He wasn't in yesterday, so I was like, "Okay, he's gonna take the week off. He's gonna rest. He's gonna get ready." And then we're you're here eating waffles, and I see him walk <laughs> in, and I'm like, "What is? Why are you here?" Well, so when I had my meniscus surgery, uh, I worked that afternoon. I was just on crutches. Yeah, I'm. I'm a stickler. Like it's a work I'm with ethic, you. I'm it's with a work you. ethic thing that was pushed. If I'm able to do a thing, do the thing. Yeah. And to not um I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to talk this morning. Um I almost called Steve. Uh, I'm supposed to MC uh the Lincoln Journal Star Awards oh. uh this evening that starts at uh five, six o'clock. And I was <coughs> loading up excuse me, support folks, right? Like yeah. in case I can't pull it off. And I wasn't sure until this morning. I get to the doctor's office. I'm like, okay, get in there, bro. Uh, like a NASCAR pit, <laughs> man. Hey, four people in there. I know. That, like, that sound. Just yeah, let me get in there. Yeah. Um, and so I'll be able to do that. And and here's the thing. The beautiful thing was I get the script from uh, Sherry Dickmeyer. God bless you. Thank you, Sherry, for inviting me to do this thing. But it's a responsibility, okay? I, I committed to it 30 days ago, not knowing the surgery was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, or whether I was going to be able to pull it off. And Rico can vouch to you that my voice on Sunday sounded like a train wreck. Uh, and it was train a, was, it was a little bit of a struggle. Yeah. And yeah. so not sure that I was going to be able to pull this off. But then I said, they sent the script. And I got to see a list of the nominees. And it's like a who's who of 93.7, the ticket uh, sponsors and friends who are going to be honored tonight. So yes. I wanted to be able to do this. Um, I'm also supposed to be speaking uh, keynote speech for the uh, NCAACP of Lincoln Ooh. tomorrow. And then, of course, Supernovas uh, on Saturday. So I needed to kind of figure out a way to make it work. And we're going to make it work. Like, I, I can't, I can't it eat. Like, it looks like it appears as if you, you got it handled. So, well, it, let me tell which you, I'm not surprised there, at all. There's some things going on yeah. in this mouth of mine <laughs> right now. There is a, a civil war battle going on. <laughs> um, but he, the, the doctor, he goes, listen, I, I thought you were an alien before. I'm positive you're an alien now because the fact that you're one, you went through what we know you went through yeah, and you're not taking pain meds. Nah, um, not even Tylenol, mm. acetaminophen, nothing like I'm, I'm, I'm just like, I need to get through it now. I can tell you it hurts. Yeah. I'm like, knock me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, they didn't put me asleep. To it. Like they didn't oh. even put me asleep to do it. Oh man. Like they numbed me, which, you know, which is the other yeah, thing, right? Yeah. You got to deal with that. But anyway, that that's neat to hear. I'm here. I'm, I'm glad you're I'm, here. I'm glad to be here. Uh, and uh, yeah, to sit back and chop it up with you three now, gentlemen. We're gonna see what we have going on. So yeah, I've been out of town for a couple of days in a golf tournament. And out we, and about. Yeah. Marino, how'd you, how'd Marino, you Marino, and, we, I did. We did all right. We got second in our flight. We're a point away from making the derby. Okay. And uh, so we we showed up. My buddy Jim Crowns, so you know him. Yeah. Great, great course Shout in out. Tucson. Well yeah, in yeah, Tucson. And uh, he carried me like. Uh, First, first day I played really well. The first nine or second nine and whatnot. And he carried me for about maybe six, seven holes, and uh, then I came through at the end. So no, we did well. It's a good okay. team. Yeah, we hammed and egged it. Well, it's good that you, so, you know, that you're getting to hit them, bro. Yeah, I know. You know, I know. I know this is your time of year. It's my time of the year. I'm, you know? I'm, I'm 100 healthy. Yeah. And uh, my swing is coming back. And my yeah. wife said no more excuses. So uh, I'm, I'm feeling good. Oh, well, I'm well, feeling well, good. Well, hey, when yeah. wifey tell you ain't no excuse, like <laughs> no, you got to get it together, bro. She said you're 100 recovered. Don't talk about the elbow. Just go up and show up. And she do said, it. I don't want to hear it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was kind of whining. I was kind of mad because, you know, you have expectations and a standard of where you should play and you're not meeting those standards. And then you kind of 
A so quality craftsman yeah, never I, blames his tool. Yeah, my buddy gave me a book. <laughs> he gave me a golf book by a great guy. You know, it's, it's called um, "Winning the Battle Within," and mm-hmm. that's and that's really what I was going through. I was really fighting against myself. So, are, are you uh, going to be able to take batting practice? Uh, oh, I'm in for that. Yeah. I may, I mean, I may, I I did that last year yeah. mm-hmm. during my after my surgery. So. Yeah. I may just be knocking them all out of the park. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to fire that up. We're going to fire that up uh, first of all. I love that. Maybe we'll get a day that. that's not a, that's million, dangerous, a million degrees. Yeah, that makes me feel <laughs> real young. I even tried to go golf left-handed. <laughs> it wasn't going to happen, though. That was the no. other Yeah, that was the other thing. Like, because of my body, I'm not supposed to swing my normal swing. Yeah, yeah. You're not allowed to swing. Uh, yeah, I'm, not supposed, I was, I'm oh, not supposed to. I was to. told when I was with you that yeah. I'm not allowed to let him get in the batting cage. That's, yeah. what, that's what Rebecca told me. Yeah. And... This, a part of me wanted to say, "How do I stop him, though?" So, <laughs> have you met? Have you met? I, him? I was like, first off, he's my boss. <laughs> yeah. no. I'm looking forward. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I'm looking forward to that. Strick, Strick, and I gonna go at that again. So we yeah, were, I, we I were think, killing it. I think it, we like you said, it. like I want to see Austin take some more oh, hacks. Yeah. Um, Amon wants to take some hacks Ooh. this year, right? Get Amon out there. Was he a baseball player at all? Did he? He, play was, he, he said yeah. he got drafted. Yeah, he wanted. Oh, really? to, yeah, because Seattle? he wanted to. He wanted oh, to play. I didn't know that. Man, he, he did... wanted to split here, and the football wow. coach just told him, "No, that would be a no." You wow, know? that's uh right. Yeah, he said he got that drafted by is... Seattle, and that they have like a wall of like all their draftees, so his yeah. name's on like a wall up in Seattle. Yeah. Wow. But he never played with them. So the, you're, Steve, you're, you're, you may be the perfect person Man, to ask cool. this. Like, that's you cool. may be the perfect person to ask this because mm. I think most fans have no idea what the space percentage of greatness that sits between them and a Division One athlete. Oh. <laughs> and then them and an elite Division yeah. One athlete. And then them and a pro, a base level, yeah. minimal, hey, I made it pro athlete. Yeah. And a elite athlete. Like there's a huge, huge spectrum, right? Yeah. The gap is massive. Yeah. Right. The, yeah, the, the, is. You have to, like, I have to explain to people in a way that sometimes the numbers do a better job of explaining the difference between how good Steve Taylor was at baseball, right? Mm-hmm. That good enough to be drafted, right? And his teammates. The difference, the yeah. athletic and work ethic difference between you and the dudes you played with substantial. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. How much? Cause, you know, cause, you, and then, and then here's the, here's the follow up to it that because like we're on the plane and the people sitting next to me on the plane, they're watching the masters. Oh, and there's a thing that boggles my mind. Everybody does it. That, that there are people who 100% should know that they can't speak about anything a a, a PGA golfer is yeah. doing yeah. compared to what they do at the local country club. <laughs> like there's they're not they're not the same. I love yeah. overhearing those. those <laughs> I know oh, that was a, a terrible shot. I could hit that. Uh, uh, no, you couldn't. I had a, I had a good friend of mine who was a, a really good golfer, uh, and he passed away last year. And uh, Larry Irvine, mm-hmm. great great guy from Seward, Nebraska. I mean, guy was like I don't know, 83, 84 years old. And, Kazillion hole in ones was a great golfer. And uh he used to see me on the golf course all the time. He goes, Man, if you just practice, you could you could really be like really good if you, if I practice. And I was like, I was like, what for? I mean, I mean, with no disrespect, I'm like, dude, you know how good those guys are that are on the PGA tour, no matter how much I practice and no matter how better I got, I mean, I know the difference between an amateur. I mean, I, I'm I, I won't even call him an amateur, right? I mean, to a guy that's that's an elite player because I play pro sports. And so that was never my goal. And I never had that type of ability as far as golf, but it, it's precisely what you said. I know guys at Firethorn who have shot like 58, 59 last year, right. And played and, and very, very good golfers. <laughs> not even close, not, 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 even, in the universe. Not, not even in the universe. <laughs> right. And so I'm like, and being a, a professional athlete, I mean, that's what you aspire to. So it's like, you know, I'm good. I'm a good golfer, but I'm, just, just around the club here. You know the difference, not, the difference. The difference. I'm like, no matter. It's not going to be the same. I mean, I don't care how many tournaments you may win locally or do whatever. All right. It's nothing compared to what the real people and the real athletes and the real pros are doing. And that goes vice versa with football, baseball, basketball, whatever, because you have that standard of play of where, where you need to be, where you need to be. Like and, you, um, I mean, here's the thing. So, and, and a wonderful case in point. Um, when we start doing the BP with DP, and, and having listeners come down and take batting practice, 
and we'll do that again. Just for oh, point of reference, right? Yeah. And everybody, uh, look, I played in high school. Okay, yeah, I get it. Okay, yeah, I, it, yeah, good for you. Yeah, I get it. You play softball. Uh, okay, but you're not Steve Taylor. <laughs> you're not. How I know that you're not Steve Taylor good is that you weren't being offered to be drafted by the Yankees. That's how I know. Like, that literally is how I know that a dude who ran one of the most prolific offenses in 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 Power Five football history, yeah, and all American, and all of the skills and work required to do that, you are not in that space. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, it's it, I, I'm just kind of since we're talking here, and it's kind of funny, right? Because people, I talk to a lot of people, and they. They ask me what you do and what you did and all this kind of stuff. And and really, sometimes I have to sit back and relax and think about some of the things that I did do uh, that, you know, a lot of people don't know about. Like, I was with Darren Ernstad on the putting green. Yeah. Darren Ernstad and I were drafted in the same round, right? In the same round. And I wasn't 100% focused on baseball. Like, the scouts knew I was not even going to play. Yeah. Right? They all knew this, right? Never talked to a scout and was still drafted. But Darren Ernstad and I who is quite the guy. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying I would have been him or whatnot, but he mm-hmm. was an outfielder, lefty, all that kind of stuff. Same, you know. You measured. Same measure, right? You measured. And then, and then <laughs> when, I'm looking at, when I'm looking at Tommy Goodwin from the Royals, guys may know him or may not. You look at Keith Mitchell from the A's, you know, guys that I played with in Fresno and were better than them at that, at that stage. Mm-hmm. No question about it, right? And they're playing in the majors. I mean, I was that type of baseball player. And I just did it during the season, you know, and often I, I think about it, you know, what if, what if I would have done this or done that? You never know. But when you, when you, when you, when you sit back and you think about that, you think, oh, okay. I mean, I, even, you, even, even my agent told me more than likely, Steve, if you would have gone that direction, you probably would have been in the majors when I was, this is when I was in Canada for two or three years and was thinking about going back to play baseball. And he said, well, you haven't seen a curveball since you're 18 or whatever, right? And that's why I said, okay, you're right. Well, it's funny but, um, because you have, no. like, when you're doing these sports or you're doing all these things and you're you're playing at such a high level or whatever level you're playing at, you you can see, like, the guys or the girls who are, you think you're really good. You see the people who are better than you. Yeah. And some of the people that you're like, that's, that's yeah. one of them. Yeah. And you know, like, when you're doing something no. at a high level, you're like, that, that person right there, that's a professional. And the, it's, the, it's, the first time I saw Steve... And so there's the player in me, and then there's the coach in me. And I watch comfortable movement is the phrase that, like, and and how people move in a certain space that's going to be successful in that space. And when Steve picked up the bat and walked to to, to the outside of the batter's box, every box that could have been checked was checked. And I went, oh, this is about to be good. Because not everybody, even the players who were playing for the Salt Dogs, (laughs) right? They there's a th- thing that happens. Yeah. They went, uh oh, here we go. Like, uh oh, yeah. with you and Strick, it's yeah. a thing. There was one, there was a dude that came and hit batting practice with us, uh, played outfield. You could tell that he was he was a dude, but he wasn't like he was looking for his next opportunity. Yeah. And he was hitting ropes and bullets, and you went, okay, it just sounds different. Yeah. It just looks different. The difference between you, Strick, that dude, and then everybody else who jumped in the box over the course of the last three years, yeah, exponentially separate. And I said, okay, this is the thing. You forget that there was a moment when Steve Taylor was the best collegiate quarterback in the country. Yeah. I, I, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll say it again yeah. for folks to not understand the space. The yeah. best college football quarterback in the country yeah. and not just in a single facet. Hey, drop back throw. Yeah. <laughs> hey, run the veer. Hey, run the option. Hey, decision maker. No, yeah. this is, <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it does freak you out because I had this conversation <laughs> with a good friend of mine, Chris Elgar is a good friend of mine. His son is a, is a really good golfer at Southeast and Chris, Chris won the state title in, in, uh, you know, in golf at Southeast. And uh, and I, I tell the story about a lot of players, even with, with Tommy Frazier, because when I got to know Tommy, when I retired, probably about 10 or 15 years ago, when I listened to Kobe, then I saw the Mannings talk, and I saw Brady talk and these guys. And and uh, I, it's exactly what you said. And here's what I say about those type of players, because I, I, was, I was a good player. 
some some people say great or whatnot. Tommy was Tommy was off the charts. There's no question about that. And I listened to talk to Tommy a couple of times, and just kind of the way when I heard players talk about Tommy, like I think now like I was too nice when I played. Like I had my little way that I, I motivated players and did some things. Tommy, and there's different ways to do things and communicate, but Tommy had another little switch that was a little different. And and I recognize that like. I mean, he was different with that, and and I give Tommy, LP I give Tom, LP, yeah, I give Tommy that kind of respect, and and so, and he's an astronomical player. And then when you talk about Kobe and and Brady, and I seen those guys and and heard them speak, the Drew Breeses and those guys, and I said to myself, I said, here's the difference between a guy like that and say a guy like me or something. I said, this guy that I'm sitting across from right now, UDP. I said, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, he's not going to quit if right. you're in a fight. Right. I said, if you're in a fight. Right. Just imagine, like, he's not going to quit. Right. He's never, and I hate to use the word quit, right? No, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's, I mean, it's he's, the measure. He's not going to stop. It's like, the measure. He's, I, I said, personally for me, at some point, I'm going to stop. I will admit that now. Yeah. But that guy, you would, imagine being in a fight with a guy that's never going to stop. <laughs> that's never, ever going to stop. Here we go. That's the difference. And that's when you go. say that, that's a whole, <laughs> that's a whole yeah. nother yeah. level. And All I right. learned that too. So, All right, anyway, ladies and gentlemen. I like that. Uh, we are going to stay on the video stream, the Starter Heyman Jewelers Live video stream, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, slash X. But on the radio, you will hear the Kansas City Royals, the first game of their doubleheader as their game last night got rained out. So Kansas City Royals on the radio, head over to the Starter Heyman Jewelers Live video stream, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, slash X, and join back in. Wednesday rap sessions with former All-American quarterback Steve Taylor will be right back. The need in our community, if you just look at the numbers, it's frightening. We're serving over a thousand kids every day. With the passion of our people, I really feel like our potential to be of even greater service to kids and families who are struggling is just unlimited. But in order to have the greatest impact, we need all the help we can get from the community. Gaina Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gaina Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round. And their strong team culture makes it not a job, but a career. Gaina Trucking offers health, vision, and digital insurance, 401k with company match, an employee assistance program, and other bonus programs. Build a better career today with great team culture at Gaina Trucking. Learn more and apply today at GainaTrucking.com. Sand Hills Global is hiring. With their fast-paced, growing culture, they have hundreds of new openings in sales, marketing, traveling support, software development, web design, and more. Full-time roles offer a four-and-a-half-day work week, along with flexible internships in most areas. Career and internship opportunities are available at our global headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. Find your fit today at www.sandhills.jobs. Working at Continental in Lincoln isn't a job, it's a career. And right now, they've raised wages again, and they're hiring for production operators at $24.62 per hour, which grows to $28.97 per hour within three years. Skilled trade positions now start at $33.36 per hour, with opportunities to make more based on certifications. Continental also has salary jobs available and great benefits, plus medical and prescription costs at very low premiums. Dental, vision, and life insurance are offered at no premium cost to the associates, with increased bonuses and vacation for new hires. To learn more or apply, go to ContinentalJobs.com with keyword Lincoln. Come work at Continental today. Tanner's Bar & Grill is the perfect place to watch your favorite MLB teams this spring and summer, as well as Nebraska baseball. Enjoy Tanner's delicious hamburgers, chicken lips, and daily specials. And wash it down with one of their tons of options of beers. You'll never have an issue finding the game as there are TVs everywhere throughout the space. So get in early and grab your spot and settle in for an afternoon or evening of baseball at Tanner's Bar & Grill, 30th and Yankee Hill. What's your radon level at home? Don't know? Find out with a call to Bryant Air Conditioning and Heating. 467-1111 for radon testing and mitigation. Not many businesses can say they've made it 60 years, but Madsen's Bowling and Billiards can. With 12 bowling lanes in the biggest pool room in Nebraska, where else would you go to enjoy an afternoon or evening? There's a great daily specials like $2 Tuesdays, games of bowling, shoe rentals, draft beers, and tacos, all just $2 each. 
Have a delicious burger at EJ's Lounge before or after your bowling or pool session, and you'll leave satisfied. Madsen's Bowling and Billiards at 47th and Dudley. You're spending $300 a month. Binge drinking is the most common form of excessive drinking, which costs the United States more than $191 billion each year. By drinking less, you will save $300 a month. If you or a loved one is looking for help, find a treatment facility near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with SAMHSA. Liberty Law Group is committed to the defense of liberty for those accused and the pursuit of justice for those injured. Liberty Law Group's relentless trial attorneys specialize in criminal defense and personal injury law. Navigating the legal system can be stressful, overwhelming, and full of uncertainty. We believe in treating every client with respect, compassion, and understanding. When you're in need of legal assistance, trust Liberty Law Group to fight for you. Call 877-42-LIBERTY. That's 877-42-LIBERTY. Now back to weekly rap sessions with All-American quarterback Steve Taylor. The 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Welcome back to weekly rap sessions with Steve Taylor here on 93.7 yes. The Ticket. Thank you all for everybody who jumped over from the radio over to the Sarger Heyman Jewelers live video stream. I believe we got, uh, I believe you can hear us on the app as well. Don't quote me on that quite yet. I am in conversations with our engineer, but I know for <laughs> sure you can hear us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter slash X. Do we call it Twitter or we call it X? <laughs> I still call it Twitter. Formerly known as. Yeah. Whatever the, whatever makes you feel good. Formerly known as Twitter. <laughs> here, here's, here's the thing. I wonder. Here, here's the thing. And this is another thing, and I get preachy every now and then, but no. people deal with it because guess what? I've earned it. Um, <laughs> we're we're as humans, we're fluid. Yep. We're fluid, like we understand. So this, the gentleman next to you, what is his name? Stephen Taylor. <laughs> what is it? What's your official legal name? Is, My official legal yeah. name. Yeah. Official legal name. What is it? Enrique. Enrique, Enrique, Enrique. Alvarez Claire. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he's now, Rico. He's a fro. He's Rico, right? <laughs> but but if we called him Rico because he asked us to, yeah. Guess what we could do in our greatest level of humanity? Call him that. That's right. It ain't. It, it's not that. <laughs> cop- hey, 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 Rico. Yes, sir. <laughs> your wife, both of you, your wives had names for their entire lives before they met you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. because you asked. They use your name instead of theirs. I mean, her last name was cooler than mine, honestly. What, what was her, what's her yeah. main name? Shot. S-C-H-A-C-H-T. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Right? So we're <laughs> able to figure out that, hey, whatever you, whatever Steve, like if he, if I call him Steve while he understands that I'm speaking and referring to him, mm-hmm. if he says to me, it's Steven, <laughs> that's what I'm going to call him. Steven. 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 It rap. Done. Move. Your mama call, move. Your mama called you Steven. I'm gonna call you Steven. Right, like, <laughs> right, 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 like, like it becomes or, or a couple other things as well. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we, like Everybody, we can't and we yeah. can't use none yeah. of them. Everybody had those. Right? <laughs> we can't use none of them because they don't belong to us. <laughs> All right. I would like to arrive how you, how you came up to X though. I I mean I, I don't know. No, oh well, it is what it is. So yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 we'll we'll do X, man. We'll do that. You, you got clips you still, for us, bro. You still yeah. type in Twitter on the on on the internet though. When you want to go, you already, type in twitter.com. dot and and it still oh. goes up to that. You know what? No know, one, you know, no one, remember. no one remembers X. No, it's still Twitter. It's, it's, it's just, still Twitter. It's just like, oh, I'm gonna go go to X. Be like formerly known as. You can go to Twitter. <laughs> Look, if, I know if, that better than I do that. If you called my mother's house, God yeah. rest her soul, and asked for DP, she would hang up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> she would have. Hung up the phone. <laughs> I, I was speaking. Some things just made a lot of sense too. Okay. Right, like I had, I had, I, I'm supposed to speak at an event, and the lady asked, "What would you like on your name tag?" Mm. That's scary, right? And she said, "You know, because yeah. Derek, DP, Mister, P- like, what do you? Yeah, I, which one? I was gonna say that's scary because where do you, which one do you want? I have like 
eighty nine different things. Right. You have yeah. things, right? Taylor yeah. made somebody. Yeah. It's, somebody it's, said it's, Taylor made. They're they're at least acknowledging you yeah. in a in a yeah. positive way. And that's my thing is if you write it or say it with positivity, then you pretty much can say whatever you want. Mm-hmm. But if you say my name with some venom on it, I'm gonna have issue with you. <laughs> <laughs> Derek. Derek. Right, like he, so, so, Rico. So, every once in a while, he'll do something. And I'm just like, Derek. Well, because he knows. <laughs> he knows. So, when I, so the legend Ron Boone, mm. right? Uh, Iron Man before AC Green in basketball. Oh, yeah. Greatest consecutive game streaks in, streak in history. Uh, time in Omaha sent his son, uh, Jeron Boone, to play yes. basketball. I remember watching right? him. So, but Ron was an NBA legend. And when I went to Salt Lake City, he asked for me to host his show. And so every day I sat with the legend Ron Boone. And out of absolute respect, you know, I literally addressed him as legend, like the legend Ron Boone. And the DP thing had its own legs by then. Mm-hmm. And when we were laughing, I was DP. But if I ever got too close to the line of, of, disrespect or a line that I, he didn't think I should cross. Mm-hmm. He would say, <laughs> Derek. Derek. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had him on, the, I had him, I had him on the show a couple of last year and Rico was producing board hopping. And in it, Ron Boone, he, we're laughing, cutting up and he goes, Derek. And the look on Rico's face, you could tell, you could like, tell oh. the, the, vo- yeah. the oh. voice change and the inflection. Yeah. It was like, oop, somebody's dribble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. It's, it's that, the old it's head. That, it's like, can Derek Pearson please come to the principal's yeah. office? Like that. <laughs> that's what that was. And it was just that. And thing, it was everybody so. turns around. He's sitting in the back. Everybody, ooh, like, what do you do? Man, yeah. if, I call, if I'm calling Steve, but if I say, hey, nine, nine, <laughs> 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 he know we're about to talk about yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel good about that because I've been pretty good lately. So, people yeah. kind of, you know, when the coaches hit you with the last name, it haven't, it haven't hit me very often lately. So, yeah. I've been pretty good. I'm saying when, the, when the coaches hit you with just good. the last name, except for my daughters, my daughters right now. What is your? How, how do you know my daughters are killing? How do you know? How do you know you're in trouble with oh, your wife? With stuff? What name does she? What name does she oh, call you? Oh, I can't say. That. <laughs> Perfect. Excellent. That's all. That's all one, one, one starts with a D and one starts with an A. Yeah. There you go. Yep. There you awesome. go. Awesome. Yeah. That is fair. That is district yeah, attorney. No, district no, attorney. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. 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 That's how it is. All yeah. right. You said you wanted to hear some rule audio. Yeah. That rule yeah let's, see what, let's see what Coach Rule is doing yesterday. How he feels about spring. So uh, here's Matt Rule's say yeah. on the results from their scrimmage that they ended mm. up having. We did. Spring league, two minutes. So all those guys got all that work. But then we held out um, Ty and Nash, who we've been holding out of all the live stuff. Tommy and Giff, Keith. Um, uh, on offense, I held out uh, uh, Ben Hart, Ben Scott, and um, Jamal Banks. Fedoni got a little work. So the guys who have a ton of reps or something like that, you know, to me, once you get, hit a thousand reps, it's kind of like, you know, let the young guys play. So, but for the for the most part, we had you know everyone else I thought really competed. We came out of it pretty healthy, which was great. And uh, you know, for us, it's like a it's like a blood test. You know, you you send your blood off. They tell you how you're doing. And for for us as coaches, to see what we're doing well for the players, to see what they did well. A lot of good things came out of the scrimmage. But uh, yeah, we did hold a couple guys. No, what you get out of that? I was going to ask you what's your take because that <laughs> okay. so that part the people he was named that he yeah. held out has been making the rounds after yesterday, made the rounds on social media. Uh, me and Farley talked about it a little uh, bit today. You know, wh- I want to know your thoughts, both of you, your thoughts <laughs> on them holding some of the older players out of the scrimmage um, as opposed to getting them into the scrimmage, you know, you know, l- less reps or however you want to phrase it. Oh, uh-huh. man, that's, you know, I have a different perspective now after, you know, 20 years of, of watching all this stuff and seeing how it's been diluted, m- minimized, you know, and everything. So, and all the speculation of guys being rated, how good they're going to be. And, and I used, to, I used to go to the practices and I used to watch. You can't really get a good feel for what a player is like, mm-hmm. right? Now, you can see some speed. You can see if a guy has some arm strength. You can see agility. You can see some basic things. But I need to see the guy under fire, under fire, mm-hmm. right? 
it's easier to throw a pass when you don't have a lot of stuff going around you. You're not getting, you're not getting hit. There's no pressure, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, so I'm holding out and hoping that when the spring game comes, that they're going to play as true a football as you can play within, within the lines <laughs> that they're doing. Right. Mm-hmm. And then I, then I'm going to see what we got going on because I need to see if guys can really play. I mean, really play how quick they are, how tough they are. Um, how, how they handle pressure and watch. It's like watching it and say, okay, that, that kid can play. He may be a, he may be an all conference guy. I could see that he has potential. He can grow. So when I listen to they, like, he's, it's a blood test. They're trying to really find out who they have and who can play. Mm-hmm. That's what they're really trying to find out right now. So that that's what I got from that clip. And from what I've seen and in, in a little bit of stuff I've seen, you know, with some highlights and stuff like that. So um, they're trying to figure it out. They're trying to figure it out. So and we're and we we are going to see what they have. I, I what they have. I, I think from 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 the coaching standpoint, no. Spring ball tells me what the focus is of how you are developing. Spring is True. about development. Period. True. Period. 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 And yeah. and who you're going to develop. Right. Well, allowed to develop. Well, absolutely. It, it, it tells you your one. It tells me the coach's comfort in being able to develop. Right. That if I put the burden of the work on the veteran players, then my foundation is the veteran player rather than the future. Yeah. Right? That the foundation of a, of a program. Forget about the team. Yeah. Because the veterans are the team. That's going to tell you the production, where they're going to end up this year. The, pro, the program is five years, six years in expansion in either direction. Mm-hmm. And it tells me whether you have comfort in your ability to form the next group of players. We know who the top line guys are based on last year. Nobody coming in, not even Dylan Raiola, can bypass everything that's been coached into the Husker players who have returned yeah. after a year under Coach Rule. If you can walk in the door in day one and bypass 12 months of coaching, weightlifting, nutrition, uh Re- rehab, recovery, etc. Oh my goodness! Oh, oh my god! Yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You go! Oh, oh, yeah. oh boy! Oh no! That we we have a, we have a different problem. we have a problem, and we and we we <laughs> had we, we had that kind of in the past a while back ago. But yeah, we're not going to go there. Well, but no, yeah. no, but, but that's, that's, yeah, that's literally that's, that's, the point. That's, that's spot on. That's, that's spot literally on. the point. Is that's that it, it tells me that at least foundationally, yeah, you're built. You're working on the foundation of of of. Development, trust, uh, standard, and future. Mm-hmm. And that if I can see from the, the back third, and again, we, 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 we as coaches like to define thirds. The top third are the players who are where they are right now. If we had to go to battle today, this is the third that we would use based mm-hmm. on whether it be talent, experience, knowledge, et cetera. Then there's the back third that, Quite frankly, they don't have the gifts of the top third, but they have something that allows them to occupy the space. Yeah. Right? That means you got to be either you are a a good throwing quarterback, a good running quarterback, um, a good physical specimen, uh, a coach in the classroom, a coach in the in the locker room. Like, you're something. You're just not everything that's in the first third. And then programs are defined by the middle. The people who have a little of this and a little of that, but they're missing something. No. Some often that's time. No. Time with the coaching staff, time with, uh, with the friction of my, as a, as a cornerback playing in high rep against Steve Taylor <laughs> will help me identify the difference between me playing on Saturday against their Steve Taylor or why I'm going to be sitting over here on the sideline watching Steve Taylor and his opponent playing at a level that I'm not at yet. Those are, those are <laughs> no, those, those are great points. And, and that's why I'm more intrigued to see how he's going to play these chess pieces at certain positions too. Mm-hmm. So, um, cause time is so important. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think rule has done a tremendous job as far as that. I've seen some, how he's running at stations and how guys are getting reps and, how he feels comfortable that he can get guys if they if they're in his system that he can get guys ready and prepared to play within a reasonable period of time. So 
I think his foundation and what he's doing, those things are are solid, right? There will have to be some decisions made about who we're going to invest in to take us to the future. Mm -hmm. And what I do like, though, is that I'm talking specifically about the quarterback position, is that he has some good choices. I mean, he has, I know he has two very good choices. And to see what he does with those and how, and how he plays that, because that's where I think the ball was dropped in the past. And uh, do we know that he has two good choices or do we? Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say two good choices. I mean, I wouldn't say does he know. Do we think he has? Here's what I would say. I know we hope. No, but yeah. (laughs) No, but but, but here's what I will say this. When I I say good, I say, you know what? At least he he has guys that appear to look like quarterbacks, Uh right? So he's done the job as far as getting guys here that I think that are quarterbacks. So uh, I think there are quarterbacks, is, right? This is exactly so, where so, I, so, I was so, hoping so, this went. So when I say <laughs> good, I mean at least we have a quarterback room now that's far better off than what we've had in a long period of time. Let me and, and you're going to you're gonna have healthy competition. So already he he's done that job, which I think he's done well. Now it's just to see, okay, where are we going to go from here? And those are, those are situations that you want to be in and challenges that you want to have. And so that I like. Now we'll see how see what he does from there, but uh, so far so good. So this so is, that's what I that, that's what I meant by good quarterback. This is why some, I this is why I got yeah. giddy over it. That again, we're we're talking about a, 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 an all American quarterback in the room, in the in the program that we're talking about. Yeah, who then went and 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 again competed and won titles around the best quarterbacks in another country. For yeah. crying out loud. And let me yeah. just say this so that yeah. we, we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to take a break because we're on the stream only. Yeah. So we, You're can the just, man. Yeah. we can just take this to the top yeah. of the right. hour. So you guys I'm can just, just going keep, with you guys. You yeah. guys we're can just keep going. Just, so, we're just rapping. We're so, just talking football, which is what I like to do. So yeah. as, 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 as a high IQ quarterback with running skills, arm talent, and winner's dog heart. Yeah. When you look at Dylan Rayola and Daniel Kalen, when you look at them just from film, can you see yourself in the room with them and then feeling comfortable that you know what? Oh yeah. These are these are these are my dogs. These are my kind of dogs. These are my kind of quarterbacks. Like that if Steve Taylor's in that room with yeah. those two, you can look either way and go, Oh yeah. 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 These are cool. These are Nebraska Power Five Division One competing in the Big Ten conference quarterbacks. If the answer is yes, tell me why. Here, the answer is yes with, okay, with the perfect. ones that he has. Yep, the ones that he has, right? And um, and the reason why I say that is because they, I mean I hate to say it because it's it's so it's so basic. Like they have good fundamentals. Fundamentals they can they can deliver the football. They have a, a high IQ of where they were when they came out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Something that you can you can grow, that you can mature, that you can develop, that you can coach, and he's done that within two years, within two years, right? So if I'm if I'm Coach Rule, I'm going to feel comfortable with what I have at this particular time. So getting Riola and this other kid, Kalen. First of all, Kalen was was really outstanding. Yeah, outstanding. Now, great work. Where they go in the future, no one no one knows, right? right. I mean, Coach Osborne recruited guys that were four or five star that may not have panned out. You're going to have some misses, right? But you want to have a lot more hits than you do misses. And right now he has, he has, I believe two hits, right? He has the best of what you can get of the last class. And he has something to work with. So, so that's the why. So I'm excited about that. And to have options. About I, what do I, I do? I lo- that, and, yeah. and the competition, right? Cause not trust me. Rayola now is thinking like, I'm going to have to play. Like it's not going to be given to me. I may have an edge a little bit, but this other kid can play. Did you right? did you think about that when you were when you walked in here? No, I see that this this is what I tell people <laughs> that right. I didn't even know that it's weird that Wendell Wooten was like a four like a five star hottest quarterback out of Texas right. when I came to Nebraska. I didn't even think about it. I just knew what I could do, and I was going to be the guy. Now. There's a certain amount of arrogance, or I don't, I don't care what you want to call it. No, right? no, no, confidence, no, 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 whatever. Right? Nothing, no. I honestly didn't know, and I was shocked when I, I was shocked. But when I came here on my recruiting trip, yeah. and they introduced me to Wendell Wooten, 
from Texas. I was yeah. like, oh, I didn't even know he was here. Yeah. And, you know, Coach Osborne never really mentioned who <laughs> that recruited yeah. the year before. Yeah. And then, you know, McCathrone and Clayton, I knew they had Sunberg because I saw him play. Right. And he was leaving and, and Travis Turner. Yeah. That's all I knew, right? Yeah. But I didn't really, I made, I don't want to say the same, I didn't make a mistake, but even when I went to Canada and they had, Tracy Ham was starting there, who had won the was championship with Georgia Southern. Was a dude. Was, was the man in yeah. college. I mean, they, not, a lot of people won't know that, right? right? I was like, I didn't even care. I was, they signed me, the bonus baby or the guy. I, right. I was going to go compete now. Tracy Ham could play, right? right? No, no question about it. But you have the mindset that you're going to be the best of what, when you think you're that type of player that you think you're going you're gonna to win it out. You're going to win, right? When did you so, know you were the dude here? Oh, when did I know? When did you know? Like, when, you were like, when did I know? Nine? Nine? I, I can I, see Steve in, in his you, dorm room you, going, I, no, honestly, number nine is I number you, equals I, number one. I, 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 tell you, I tell you a true story. I, 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 took, I, his, I took his bag I, out of his no, car. I tell you yeah. a true yep. story. <laughs> this, is, this is when I knew, and it really <laughs> came from other people, right? Because I had came up early in the summer. At that time, players didn't come at all until fall camp, right? Right. Until you reported in school, right? Not what these guys are doing now. But we had the, 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 we're the second ready recruiting class in the country that year, right? The class of the year I came out. We had myself, Broderick Thomas, Leroy Etienne, Richard Bell. We, our class was loaded. And so, and I was reading about all these guys, right, who I'm going to play with. So, and I was excited to get here and I was going to be the guy. So I was going to come up what I thought was early, which was just in the summer. Yeah. I yeah. graduated from school, did all my high school stuff and came up in the summer. And we were working out with the team. And we were young, and that's when Doug DeBose was the front runner for the Heisman at that point. I remember working out with him, and and I threw a couple passes, and Doug and some other guys were like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> they were like, "They were like, dude, you can throw." <laughs> so right then and there, <clears throat> I knew that they have not seen something at Nebraska that what I was doing. So that's when it first went off. Like, oh, well, they got quarterbacks here who can't throw. Or, or whatever, right? I was thinking like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, right? That's so, a real thing, right? So, so I'm going to get this. And then once I got here and played in the freshman team and did whatever, then I saw them play. I knew I was, I, I, I thought I was that much. I knew I could do things far better than what I was seeing. And, uh, and, uh, and, I, think, and, and I think that highlights yeah. the rest of the team and the program, how good the program was, where it stood at that yeah. moment, oh, yeah. was that it needed a piece. Yeah. And you were the piece to, yeah. to keep it moving. And why, when we talk about Dylan Raiola and Daniel Kalen, that they could be Steve Taylor level talent. Yes. But that means that you also have to pause, yep. stealing from Strict, pause to, to ask whether the rest of the Husker roster looks like and stands at the standard that was on that Husker yes. team. Yeah. And the other positions, because receivers, right? There's, I, I'll say it openly, be mad, but there's no Doug Dubose in the backfield no. currently, right? <laughs> no, no. And there's no, and, and there's not that type of competition. Yeah, it's good, but it's not Doug Dubose good, at yeah. least not yeah. yet. Yeah. And so as you evaluate the Raylan Kalen, Rayola Kalen yeah. situation, and the development aspect of it, right? Because, in fairness, we're not going to put rule and staff on the level of, of, of where your coaching staff was. Yeah. So then just pump the brakes and give a little bit of, you can give credit for the talent brought in, but also have vision and perspective. You say some great things because, <laughs> and, and like, and, and we're just, I love talking about this. Right. And it all starts with the coaches. Cause regardless of, I have, I have tape. And it's weird when I listen to the tape of Coach Osborne, like, evaluating me in spring, right? I have this because and, and – You better get us the tape, no, man. No, you, 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 ta no. Rico! The tape, the tape is, the tape is pretty tape. amazing, right? Rico! And, and, I, and I didn't, I didn't – Some people have and secrets. This, and this, and I, and I talk about Coach Osborne a lot. And, and it's the way he went about his business and how he did it. Mm -hmm. And even though he thought I would be the guy, he would never really come out and say, that guy is such and such. Like – I remember I was watching the thing and and and, and Scott Frost said, and I was just baffled by this. He said he's seen Adrian Martinez throw passes he's never ever seen before. I mean, when he made a comment like that, I was like, except I, except for that number fifteen down in Kansas City. That's what he said. That, that was the quote. I, it's just a comment that you just don't make. I mean, you just and and Scott should have known better. Now I gave him a pass because Scott 
mechanics just weren't a quarterback's like mechanics, right? So I just gave him a pass, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe he was saying I never threw a ball like Adrian or something. Right? Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe he was projecting in that. I'm just talking here, right? But this is I, such gold. The, it's such yeah, gold yeah, like, because the the tape. I was even taken back. Coach Arsenal said, and he's doing an interview, and he's talking. He's like, well, you know, Steve's um, Steve's have really good arm strength, and and uh, he, he throws a nice ball, and. He's the fastest quarterback that we ever had, which was a fact. I ran in 40. Mm-hmm. So he's the fastest quarterback that we ever had and that he seems to, to learn well. That's all he said. Going into spring. That's spring a practice. lot. That's I mean, a I mean, lot. So even even people, that, even that motivated me. comparisons now. No, but the fact that he just didn't come out and say, well, he, you know, now the media compared me to like, Turner Gill and that kind of stuff, right? It was always that comparison with Turner. Yeah, that's on. mental laziness. Yeah, but okay. yeah, yeah. No, that, but that's the media. But Coach Arvin would never say that. He would never say that um, Broderick Thomas or Neil Smith or, you know, um, Jason Peter are going to be the best to ever play at the university. Right. He would just never say that. He would go about it in different ways that would give you confidence. Yeah. The player then also give the media that, well, he, this, this kid may be special. But we don't know yet. And isn't so some of that the greatness of Tom Osborne? That's Tom the greatness. That's, 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 what I'm, that's exactly what I'm talking about is how you bring those guys along and how you frame it and you control the narrative, right? Mm-hmm. And in the meantime, let that kid develop and earn it and, and so forth. Yeah. And to keep those guys behind him saying that your, your position is never really solid. Right. Well, it also makes you work. Make, it makes you work. It makes it you work. It makes wait, you wait, work, wait, right? coach, see so, this dude. So, because my wife and I, we talk about this all the time, because we we be watching film or, or watching a game or practice, and I was like, oh, no, he doesn't have it. Oh, no, I'm not. Because my standard is here mm-hmm. of where you have to be to compete at a level that you want to be successful at. Yeah. Right? So that's always, and I'm I'm nothing special, right? That's always going to be my standard. And whatever sport that is. And, I, I and, have mad yeah. respect for your ability yeah. to say that. No, because that's just the way it is. And, <laughs> and that's why, that's one reason why I don't give these kids, when, they, when you see these ratings, I just, well, they're just ratings. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're, they're just ratings. It's not work. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just, not work. Let's see what happens. Yeah. And let's see once they get here, you know, if it comes to flourishion. You yeah, know, this, this hour and I can flew, see some basic bro. things. This, I know it always does, man. This I like, hour flew, I, man. I, I t- I mean, that's what I like the best. And that's what I want to go and see. And that's where I think Barul <clears throat> already in one or two years have made the team roster, I think, better. Yeah. I mean, it's better. Yeah. And, and, it, and he has a lot of work to do. And he's building that culture, that foundation to where it needs to be to be competitive first, you know, to be competitive in your conference and, and on a national level. Well, so we're, we're going to see and, it and next and we're, and, we're, and we're going to see some of that. And yep. we're gonna, I want you to come back and let's talk about that. Yep. After that game, then we're going to say, okay, what did we really see? I'm with you. Can what I did we really you, see? Can Go I ahead. ask you a question oh. before we get out of here? This yeah. is the last yeah. question. This is something that uh, Vershawn was talking about yesterday, and then Terrell mentioned it <laughs> today. He said, well, he goes, the actual quote from Terrell, talking to Vershawn is like talking to a brick wall. Nothing gets through. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, and this is, what is a dual threat quarterback? Because we had the discussion of there's four different quarterbacks. Well, there's four. Okay, that's what we that's what we decided. Because there's like the in between. So there's the, like the pocket, the pure pocket passers, right? The guys who are just right. in the pocket. You're not worried about them running at all. Okay. Right? Then we decided that the pro style are the guys who are like pocket passers, but they can move when they need to, right? Then there's the dual threat who are good at both, and then there's the running quarterbacks who are the guys who you are scared of their their legs. Mm. And you want to force them to throw. Okay. Well, that's, that's what we that's what okay. we decided. I, I'm gonna ask you. A dual threat quarterback is a guy that can beat you with his feet and beat you with his arm and his mind. That's a dual threat quarterback. Right? Because you can't take away one or the other. Because mm-hmm. he can he can do both and do them at a very high level where you just can't prepare one way or the other, mm-hmm. right? To me, that's a dual threat quarterback. Yeah, dual threat. If, if you, if you want to even say yeah. that, right? From, from, a, um, from a coaching standpoint, it is the thing that can Steve put up 300, since the metrics are 300, yeah. 300 and 100, mm-hmm. yeah. can he equally do, do I have to equally defend those two things all at the same time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's really what du- that's, 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 that's what yeah, the duality that's the duality is. Yeah. That's the simplicity. I think that's what we yeah. landed on. Is that that we get caught up pocket quarterbacks 
there is horizontal movement within the oh, pocket, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. right? Yeah. And their ability to step up into the pocket to create another avenue for them to throw through, a yes. window to throw through. Pocket hmm. quarterback is m- pocket manipulation. Yes. That that's break that down and stop right there. That's that, that, that there are quarterbacks that can step up into the pocket and beat you with their arm. They can step back, step side to side, and get rid of the ball into a space through an open window. Yeah. That's their job is to, to do that. But there are dual threats that no matter where they are and how you're scheming them, yeah. they can step up and then put you in a one-on-one no. situation with a defender that doesn't want to be there. Mm-hmm. They can step up and release through an open window to a to receiver yeah. that you don't want him to be there. Yeah. And then they could he could pump fake it. Yeah. And lead that linebacker with some broken ankles and, you, and get and to one. I, 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 no, no, I love this because I would love to never have been described, defined as a dual threat because the most dangerous dual threat quarterback is the one that people don't give to the respect that they get what they can do with their feet. Yep. Mm-hmm. The guys that are most dangerous, well, that are dual threats quarterback are the ones that do not get stereotyped is stigmatized like Lamar Jackson, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And the prime example are your Aaron Rodgers mm-hmm. and your Mahomes. Mm-hmm. Those guys are so freaking dangerous because they forget that they're as mobile yeah. as any quarterback around. So that's and can, where and I can, was. And could beat you with his legs mm-hmm. totally. And do, you see his pump? Yeah. And, and then so defining what, beating, what, what air quotes beating you is. Because exactly. beating you can be Patrick Mahomes <laughs> getting seven yards Four times a game to re, to, exactly. re, to remove the first down. And he should have been sacked because you didn't think that yes. he was a dual threat. Right. So yeah. it, it depends on what you define that as. Yeah. And then, listen, I don't need – Elway was a dual threat. Oh, People exactly. want to call him That's one or the said. other. But the reality was Elway, without fail, six times a game, <laughs> would pull it down. He would yeah. stretch defenders. Yeah. Cardiac-wise, he would make them move in spaces they didn't want to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He would go dive forward, get you eight yards, first down, here we go again. And there are several of those guys yep. in NFL. I mean, Russell Wilson, the Aaron Rodgers. I mean, Dax in that space, right? So, so there that's are tons where of guys we like that. separated so the yeah. dual threat and the pro. That, that was kind of our separation because it was guys like that where it's you don't think about them running. You think about <laughs> mostly them in the pocket. In the pocket, yeah. Dicing you up from in there. Well, but, but that's they why they can, that's why they're in the playoffs every year. But, because, yeah. but they can do that. And that's where we <laughs> separated into that pro style where it's like they you're not thinking about them running, but they will run on you. Whereas dual threat are guys who are going Drew to Drew Brees was pro style, but Drew Brees was oh, athletic. Athletic. He yeah. Was, you can move he around. was athletic. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. and you know, because we were talking about cause because we were they were talking yesterday about Caleb Williams. And him not being a dual threat. This Wrong. is what Rashawn. He said, Caleb, Wrong. he said, Caleb is not Wrong. a dual threat. He said, Tally is a dual threat. Wrong, Ghost Rider. Incorrect, Ghost Rider. That's yeah, where we can. said, that's where I'm, I'm glad I was yeah. working. Yeah. And that's, where I working. I said, oh my. that's where I said, I think he's that pro style slash dual. Like he's the guy who you're scared of his arm a lot, but he will beat you with his feet if he uh-huh. needs to. That he tells me you haven't. You Rashawn haven't... didn't say that really. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, said, really, yeah. he really it was yesterday. Did. Okay, all right. And I'm listen, you know, I say what you say. I know. I, I, say what you say. Rayola no. is a dual threat. Here's the thing that you don't ideally want to. He's going to cause problems in the Big Ten no. for any defensive coordinator who doesn't honor and respect his feet. Mm. Exactly. Like that's the thing. And he's smart enough to know an IQ when well, you watch his film. And I'm not talking about the highlight. Go and watch just watch a Rayola film. game film. Yeah. No. Like this is there are highlight evaluators and then there are game film film evaluators. And if you watch him on film, the biggest games that he played in, he affected the game with his feet. Well, yeah. that's when he broke people down and kept them on the defense on the on the field for another three plays because with his feet, he broke them down, went to the <laughs> sideline, uh, and then all of a sudden the coordinator has to go. Well, listen, I need to bring my safety downhill yeah. to to finish and complete this guy because good defensive co- great defensive coordinators defend all eleven no. by fifty. Oh, it, it, I, I, I have to laugh because it's so funny, right? Because and and, and there's a, I forget the the pundit on 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 ESPN that talks about this and was giving Lamar his his his, his true respect of what he's done and everything. But and and a friend of mine sent the article to me the evolution of of black quarterbacks, mm-hmm. right? And how and I say that in a way because that's exactly it, it was a, a guy doing his thesis who got his master's and he did the evolution of the black quarterback. And how they get stigmatized as being athletic or being people that, that can run, right? And 
The test is the I can When you look at Lamar run, I mean, this guy is just beautiful when he runs, right? <laughs> so they look at that versus, and he can also throw a ball and put it right on a dime, right? And read coverages and do all that stuff. And you look at a guy like Mahomes, <laughs> when he runs, it's comic. I mean, it's like, it's, it's all over the place. It's all over the place. He's well, running and he's he runs he's, like a baseball he player. Run, he, he runs like a baseball player. He runs like, like, player. He runs like it's just like that's so much wasted movement, <laughs> right? Yeah, but it's but it doesn't look like flu. It just it doesn't look like Marcus no. Allen, right? Well, but Lamar no. looked like Marcus Allen, but it works. Well, with Mahomes running, I don't. <laughs> but that's the Kaiser so say the greatest the greatest thing yeah. the devil does is teaches you that makes yeah. you think that they don't exist that way. Oh, exactly. Mahomes. Yeah. Mahomes <laughs> thing is Mahomes from yard number two. To oh. yard number eight, he is as good with his feet yeah. as any as football anyone. player in, yeah. the, in the in the league. Mm-hmm. The deal is, don't extend him to fifteen yards, exactly, because then he he breaks down <laughs> because he's not a sprinter. Yeah. People say people, <laughs> hey, people say he sounds like Kermit the Frog. He runs like, like Kermit yeah, the Frog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just I just love it though because because it's, it's awesome, man, and it's awesome. Anyway, it was great, man. We got to have DP on the show every every Wednesday. That's if I'm here, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm here, it's like I can talk. I can talk. Your I like talking. Yeah, call. Yeah, if I'm here, hey, if I'm here, that's what I love about it. Yes, we're just rapping football and whatever. Here it is. That's gonna do Good it. Good my man. Your Good mouth looks you. great and everything. And we about to see. Have fun tonight. Yep. Thank All you. right. That's gonna do it here. Wednesday rap sessions with Steve Taylor. They'll talk to you. He'll talk to you next week. Here on 93.7 The Ticket, theticketfm.com. Thank you for joining us again. On the video streams only, Royals on the radio. Join us. Happy Hour coming up next. Garage doors can be expensive. Are you keeping yours in the best condition possible? This is Cameron Hall with Doors Plus. Doors Plus is a locally owned business that prides itself on the fast, reliable, and friendly service. Doors